Hello, I'm Stephen Threadgold from It's Learning. I want to tell you a little bit about the way we work with data, the way we import data, and the way we export data. And of course, we're doing this within the context of all of the systems and all of the integrations that have been promoted by SURF. In this short presentation, I'm going to tell you a little bit how we import data and the standards that we use, how we export data, how we work with different single sign-on systems, I'll tell you a little bit about the value add from the It's Learning learning management system, and then also talk about our data vision. For those of you that don't know It's Learning, we're one of the, if not the largest LMS provider in Europe. Um, we have offices across the world in the US, in the Netherlands. We're headquartered up in Bergen, in Norway. Uh, we've got offices in France, in Berlin, um, uh, and uh, many other countries as well. Last year, we had about 4.5 million active users within the platform. And over the past few months, we've seen an increase of about fivefold in the usage across all of its learning, as everybody is trying to go into a new way of teaching and learning because of the COVID virus. We had 380 million logins last year, and we're relatively unique amongst education providers because we are providing a lot of the um, revenue that we generate straight back into research and development to make our product better. So that's a little bit about us. Now let's talk about data. For us in its learning, it's important that we can work with many different data systems. It's important that our schools, our universities, our colleges can get data into its learning and get data out of its learning. We know we work inside a large system of interactive and integrated systems. We don't pretend to offer everything that a university or school could want, but we want to try and offer a great place for teaching and learning, and that means we need to work with many different systems. When we're trying to get data into its learning, the core data we think about first is things like users, courses, and enrollment. It's great when the term starts that I can just jump into its learning and I'll see all of my courses set up with all of my students. And here we use a number of different integration systems, some of them based on IMS. The IMS organization is really important to us. Um, we are members of IMS and have been for a long time. Um, I sit on the IMS Europe board. Uh, we're very active in the IMS uh, meetings and the IMS working groups. And for us, having a good open standards body that can create good reusable standards that everybody can implement is really important. So you'll see IMS appear many times. So we use IMS-E and IMS-ES, um, which are slightly older systems. They are um, uh, really based on um, XML and a old SOAP system, but that's a great way for almost anybody with a historical system to get data into its learning for courses and so on. We also use one roster. That's a really important way of being able to get things in. But because lots of our partners and lots of our schools and lots of our universities aren't really ready for these more advanced systems, we also offer flat file import and XML import. And we also work with a lot of timetable systems, especially here in the Netherlands, uh, and we use their own proprietary interfaces. So we have a real mixture of open standards and some proprietary systems. We also want to get course information and learning objects into our system. And for that, we use IMS um, Common Cartridge and IMS Thin Common Cartridge. We also use QTI um, for getting test data in. Uh, and we also have our own API that we've developed that's open and well-documented that people can use to push content into its learning. We also want to work with tools, and that means we want to be able to do things like grade passback. So a school can use a, um, a really exciting assignment tool that has been developed by a third party, use it in their day-to-day -day work within our learning platform. And for that, we use systems like LTI with grade passback or LTI deep linking. Um, and we also have our own way of building apps as well. So that's our own proprietary system that's open but well and well documented. Um, and at the moment, we are just upgrading our LTI offering to 1.3, which is the latest version. We also work with cloud resources. We know that schools want to work with Microsoft and work with Google. So we work with G Suite and Office 365 and also older systems like WebDAV and uh, Dropbox. And that means I can pull these great resources from 
um, the cloud straight into my courses and use them with my students. We also allow data to come out of its learning. So I can get data out using IMSES um, and our organization API. I can get materials. I can export my course materials through Common Cartridge and other systems. I can get the learning outcomes so I can put them into third party um, SIS or MIS so I can get grades out that the teachers have, have marked inside its learning. They've given feedback and I can get those grades out. So we use IMS One Rust for that. We also have a data warehouse that has all of the learning outcomes, the grades and uh, when they were given and learning outcomes and so on. Teachers can download them directly so they can, you know, get a, um, an Excel of all of their grades from their grade book. And we have many direct integrations with SIS systems. We also provide usage data, who's doing what and where and when and so on, how long are students spending in the platform. And for that, we use our data warehouse, which uses OData and teachers can download that. So for instance, they can download how many times the students have visited their course and their assignments. So if they're doing a parent's evening, they can have that on their own um, laptop and be able to look through that with the parents. We also have a number of SSO systems. Uh, you'll see, for instance, there that Entree um, and Surf uh, Connect are really important to us, but we also support things like SAML and LDAP and Google Logon and Office 365 Logon. So for us, being able to work with these many different SSO systems is really important too. What do we add? Well, I've only got a couple of slides on this because I wanted to really just sort of whiz through what we add when it comes to data. For us, it's all about putting data in an educational context and allowing teachers to get on with their day-to-day -day work, with their day-to-day -day teaching and learning. And here's a solid example of that. Um, here I can see that I'm pulling, for instance, some files from SharePoint or from OneDrive and putting them in my course. Now, out of the box, things like OneDrive, they don't support learning objectives and so on. So what we're doing is we're adding some educational value to this integration by allowing the teacher to pull resources directly from SharePoint to add learning objectives to them, which can be set at the school or the course level. I can see a report within its learning about all of the content within my course and how well is it aligned to learning objectives. Are students missing out on content to support specific learning objectives? And then we use our own reporting system to say how many times people visited that um, resource, even though it's not within its learning, it's held out in the cloud. So what we've done is we've added a solid educational scaffold to this simple integration or, or this quite, quite elegant integration with um, Office. So what's our vision for data? Well, we have five core values that everybody in its learning has to adhere to. We have yearly um, uh, reviews and an online test that really makes sure that all of our um, staff are bought in to the importance of data. So for us, we always need to remember that, you know, data is important to the teaching and learning process, but we only try and store data within our system that adds value to that process. So for instance, we don't store a lot of demographic data on students. We don't think we need to. The schools can do that. The schools can have systems for doing that. So we don't try and store a lot of data that's not really needed for teaching and learning. All of our processes are transparent. We follow best practice. Um, GDPR, we had a data protection officer long before GDPR um, came into force. We are certified with ISO 27001 um, and many other global standards. And we always need to remember that we're custodians of customer data. It's precious and we must treat it with respect. And how we implement that is really interesting. So for instance, we always provide clear information to our customers and our users about how we work with their data, where it's stored and so on. We allow customers to implement the four important tenets of GDPR, the right to be informed, to access to rectification and the right to be forgotten. There's an interface within its learning where system administrators, trusted system administrators on behalf of customers can download data to give it to a, a, um, a user or they can even remove that user completely. And all of that is audited within our system. So we provide great access to um, you know, implement GDPR. We never forget the flow of data. Whenever data leaves its learning, we have to have data, data agreements in place with those third parties on behalf of our customers. We're always proactive. We always make sure that we are reviewing standards, training our staff and making sure everything is good as it can be. 
we test our processes. We run data breach tests. We have a dedicated security team. And our data processes are embedded in, in daily work, as I said. So even things like old emails, we make sure that they are following GDPR rules as well. And we have regular updates from our data protection officer and every member of staff is certified in understanding how to handle customer data. So there we go. That's a quick overview of its learning. I'm happy to answer uh, questions um, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.